Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Dynamic Duo Podcast. I am your host Travis Snail and it is another edition of Top Superhero Comics. I don't know why I added superhero. Superhero is definitely not in the title but Top Comics of August 2016 this time. Yes, another edition. Third edition. Um, Yeah, if you've listened to the past two you know what this is if not i'll give a quick rundown i pick five comics comics that are maybe not necessarily that i think are the best i was definitely debating an inner struggle this week of being like should i change the name because you know i picked top but i more or less try to pick ones that are i've said before jumping on points or number one or a big end of an arc or something like that so like there's one comic we'll get to later that i've picked um, that I definitely would not say is probably the top, one of the top comic books in August, but I guess like maybe top as far as you should read or like if you're interested in it. Um, yeah, there's a good month. Uh, I picked five as usual. Once again, if you didn't know, that's what I do. I picked five, five August, picked some Marvel DC, haven't picked any other companies so far because I'm not reading too much of other companies right now. Um, yeah, let's get into it, I guess. This week I picked... Hmm, should I spoil it? Okay, I think this is the second time I did two two Marvel, three DC. Um, other than what I'm going to talk about, uh, I this month for me was really, really good. And it was actually really tough about which ones I wanted to pick. But then once I kind of boiled down at first, I was like, I had all these options. And I was looking and uh, like I said, there was one like quality or whatnot, everything like that. I was having truthfully a tough time to decide And then I picked five that I really, really liked. Well, I picked four I really, really liked and four that have kind of have like, you know, get all sappy and whatnot, like a special place in my heart as far as just like, just that I've liked the past year. Um, Just because I'm not sure in September if I'm going to do one of these. We've got actually a few more spinoff shows coming. I can't uh, spoil that, but we got those in the works. So check those out. I think they're all... Mm, yeah, we might have more than two. We got a lot of good stuff. Check out all our other spin-off shows too. But next month might not be one, so we'll see. Maybe I'll do one for September and October. That might be happening more often. Do like a, I don't know, top ten. Oh boy, I talk already enough with five, ten, Jesus. Um, so I want to do a lot that I've really, really liked and ones that I've talked about that I was going to do just because September, don't know if I'm going to get around to it. And truthfully, at the end of the month and so far that I've found in September that I've been reading, it's a lot of issues and arcs that are right in the middle. You know, there's not really ones that are jumping on points unless people are reading it. You know, DC, let's see, yeah, Batman Beyond starting in October. I'll definitely be doing October because I love Batman Beyond. So put me down for that. I should be back for October for sure. But there just seems like DC was doing so many number ones and Marvel was doing a lot of like Civil War 2 started and they just did a bunch of rebranding and restarting. So it was a good time to start the show. And now I think right now it's in September. It's kind of this awkward phase where it's like things are wrapping up or in the middle where I think in October, November is when Marvel's starting their... Is it Marvel now or something like that? And it's like with Riri's Iron Man, which that one I definitely will read and review. So there's a lot coming that's good. So that's why September might be a break. If not, who knows? Month is not over. It's just starting pretty much. So if there's some good jumping on ones, um, I'll go with that. I'll actually, I, I'm going to switch my order here around and talking about jumping on points. Uh, we'll start with Suicide Squad from DC. Read that. Uh... I guess a little spoiler, uh, not for the content, just for my opinion. It was just very, very all right, kind of run the mill. I've not read too much. I did not read read too much of the new Fifty Two Suicide Squad, so I'll preference that. I've not even read. I'm not even a big, you know, huge fan of Suicide Squad in general. Not that I have anything against them, just I haven't read that much. I think more of them popping up in crossovers. I read a few of like the original runs because one of my friends has that so i read that and i've i read a little bit before the movie but not as much as usual um i read and then i'd say five to ten maybe of the first new 52 uh just because a friend bought them i was like oh yeah sure i'll read them so didn't have much expectations going into here um me not really liking the movie didn't really have much bearing because i liked the majority of the characters in that movie so i read it yeah very very just kind of it's not bad but it's kind of like you know how a couple a couple months it was literally a couple months ago when we i reviewed the first wonder woman rebirth and i said like this was an 
it was a good comic. It was all right, but it's going to be much better when you get to see the whole arc. And I think that issue is going to be a higher rating when it's in an arc. And, like, you get to see, like, you know, a volume, I should say. With this, not the same. It just felt very ho-hum. It felt very skippable. It felt like, I don't know, it just, especially the plot. And this is, like, a my. If you don't know if you're first time listening to this, I do minor spoilers. If I do a big one, I'll preference and let you know because I want you to go out really read them or maybe if I recommend it. And I still... See, see, and that's a bad thing. Wonder Woman, I recommend you should go read it. With this, unless you really like the characters and you're planning on reading Suicide Squad from start to finish or whatever, getting into this, um, the rebirth, then go read it. But I would not recommend this at all. It wasn't terrible, but it's just not worth the money. You know, I was really... Out of all the ones I've done so far, I was really deflated. And I was going to go... Back and forth between it was this and Harley number one that I was going to do on the show. I've still not read Harley number one, but I picked Squad because the obvious movie just came out, so it's like it's a bit more current. Harley Quinn's always going to be current, but a bit more current. Um, I like I said, I like the characters in Squad, so I wanted to give it a shot, and I want because lots of people it seems it had it had a good enough fan base for them to make a movie, and people before that seemed to really liked. I think the majority of New 52, I didn't hear people, I guess, rave about it, but I didn't hear bad things, so, anyways, we get in this, and the comic feels very, very much like the movie, like, I, I have a note here, and this is, like I said, a minor spoiler, um, there's a bomb that's turning people into metahumans, okay, so minor spoiler. Minor spoilers for Squad, but let's be honest, if you're listening to this, you've seen Suicide Squad, so, obviously, they're not... Enchantress is not turning normal people into metahumans, but she's turning into these blob, you know, poo monsters. Uh, and, yeah, like, she's turning normal people into these poo monsters, and they're going to do bad things. And this bomb that's supposedly going to go off is going to turn them into metahumans. I would guess that are bad or confused, so they're going to be bad or used for bad purposes. And it felt very much like the movie in sort of that sense. And just kind of overall did a little bit, like, the characters. And, obviously, it's because it was adapted, but just, like... It felt almost like too similar to me, just with the bomb and the metahuman thing. Um, it seems like Rick Flake's kind of the the gateway in the the um, this comic. I was gonna say story. Either way, um, Myers probably starts off in prison. Amanda Waller gets him, and they do the whole run through the team. Blah blah. blah. Didn't really know much about Squad as far as how it ended, so it was all kind of new to me. And that's the other thing I'll give it too is it did set it up. But it didn't feel like, and I, I guess I have to preference this between. I'm, I've always said before, like, oh, when we talk about Marvel and DC, I do say like I'm more of a Marvel guy, and it's just that's my dog Heisenberg. He joins me all the time for these solo cast, so I'm not always alone. You know, it's, can't can't be alone. Um, just because in Marvel, there's just more characters I gravitate towards, but with DC, there's many characters that I still like and gravitate towards. It's just Marvel had more of them. They have half the fucking X-Men, you know, that I love. Um, but with them, I guess with, like, Wonder Woman and Flash and Hal Jordan's Green Lantern, I guess I knew enough of their origin. So when they do the little rundown, I'm like, oh, yeah, this makes it seem like it would be, like, it would be good enough for non-viewers to understand. But with Squad, and I understood it. It just didn't feel like, I felt like with those other three, you could read them and then, boom, be right into it you know adjust of these characters and to me if i didn't know previous knowledge of this i didn't get adjust of these all characters and it is a team up so i understand but it's different because other than quinn they're not going to be getting their solo so you can't flesh them out so um yeah i'm not going to spoil it too much i'm not going to talk about that much because honestly there's not that much to talk about lots of it's a very action comic book and the art was good enough not bad art not you know it just wasn't when it's a comic book that's primarily just art, or sorry, primarily, or a good portion of its action, I think you really gotta kill it in the the art department, and the artist really has to step up, and I'm not saying they did a bad job, I I don't know if I'm gonna keep reading, I think I might give it a couple, more. I think I'm gonna give it to, I don't know, I, it depends on the month goes to be honest like it depends with marvel with the new ones they start up because they're gonna do the new ones october november so if there's lots of ones i'm buying there suicide squad will fall to the wayside but i'd like to like it but there's nothing imploring me to really go back but if i had to i'd probably maybe like give it to three issues and then we'll go from there and if i like it i'll continue if not then it'll just go to the wayside so um wouldn't recommend it if you're a squad fan sure and if you really like those characters sure but if not then 
I think this is a skippable one. I give it a six. It was not awful. It was not great. Just kind of run the mill, very mediocre. Um, like I guess why I didn't give it five because you know there's some good character moments in there, but other than that, there wasn't anything that I really got attached to, and I kind of. Some panels I was a little bored to be honest, and I read all the panels, but it's just like I wasn't gripping, flipping next page to page. And there's some issues that are like that so far in DC and Marvel. But the thing is with DC so far with the rebirth, and this was the the Suicide Squad rebirth number one. With the rebirth, I feel like they've killed them not only just with DC rebirth, but with the solo ones. You know, I I really enjoyed the Batman one. Really enjoyed, really really enjoyed Flash. I've been liking Wonder Woman's. Really enjoyed Green Lanterns too. Um, I can't remember why I didn't do that one. I think that was one of the options I was thinking about. Maybe it didn't come out in August. can't remember. But um, really enjoyed the rebirth. And even at the issues, a Nightwing really enjoyed. And Red Hood really enjoyed, which we'll talk about later. Really enjoyed the rebirth. And they really kicked me in and they hooked me. Even though the fact of, like, I'll read it to, fa- like, let's say, till the arc's over. And then when it's over, I'll be like, okay, I'm, I'm good. I can start reading. But this just didn't hook me. So, yeah, so 6 out of 10. It's all right. Read if you like, but I wouldn't recommend it. All right, now speaking of Red Hood, let me get notes here. Um, let's see. So yeah, I have a, a quick shout out to, I think cause it came out in end of July. Quick shout out to the actual Red Hood rebirth. Um, great backstory. Uh, they do this kind of great bait and switch where they make Jason Todd look like he's doing bad stuff and he's a bad guy in the public and Batman, they do a good setup where Batman's kind of thinking he's bad and won't spoil that, but he has this, yeah, I don't, minor spoilers, they make it look like he's going to assassinate a mayor, I think, I think it was a think it was the mayor, but then it's really he was curing the mayor and Batman him fighting in public and the if you like Jason Todd, or even if you like the Bat Family, really recommend DC Rebirth for Red Hood. That was really good. Um, and that kind of set up this one, which is Red Hood and the Outlaws number one. Now, now that I think about it, I guess it's called Red Hood and the Outlaws, but there's no real... I don't think there was an Outlaws in the first issue. But the thing is, I guess, to give a little backstory, I'm a big Jason Todd fan. I'm a big Dick Grayson fan. I'm, I'm definitely a Dick Grayson fan, but I'm just a big fan of the bat family in general i think they always have a really good dynamic like you like if you think about what they go through in a real world term it's pretty messed up heisberg out let's go out out let's go come on set up going You know, Bruce Wayne himself is an orphan. He has a bunch of orphans from all different means, whether they be homeless or parents being killed and whatnot. Um, always really liked, I think I talked about Nightwing last month, really like the dynamic there, and I really like the dynamic with Todd. I like all the Robins, and not except, but Tim Drake has just always been my least favorite. Dick Grayson obviously being the first, and there's be- that to me is the really, other than Damien, obviously but that really really feels like they all felt like father and daughter and father son relationships but that one to me feels the the strongest not only written but just from a character standpoint of this is the first kid he takes in and there's always this great back and forth and dick grayson to me is a rebel when it comes, like he rebels against batman but he's still always looking for his approval still is always trying to impress him still trust him at the end of the day you know they still work together most of the time so there's this thing of like they'll fight but they'll always come back together with todd it's a much much different dynamic where obviously that's there is a nightwing series yes but he's working with batman batman's funding him red hood yes he'll be working with batman but it's very there's a lot of tension in there. I'm not going to go into the whole depth of their relationship from starting way back when to when him become the Red Hood. But 
this comic rebirth and the number one issue does a really really good job of showing you the backstory and showing you what they've been through together and what the type of relationship they have um i do believe todd wants to impress batman but at the end of the day he kind of just cares about himself and doing what he thinks is right. Not in a selfish thing. He's still a hero per se, but he or Dick, I feel like, will eventually come around and be like, you know what? We should do it Bruce's way or he's going to confirm with Bruce. Todd would like to do it Bruce's way or would love Bruce to agree with the way he's doing things, but at the end of the day, he's going to do things the way he wants. So I love the relationship. Love the relationship with Wayne, or yeah, Wayne, Damian Wayne, Tim Drake. Maybe I just haven't read enough, but anytime I've read, just has just never felt as strong. You know, it's uh, just have nothing against character, but so I really like Jason Todd. This did a really good job of, like I said before, with the rebirth, setting it up, and then going into issue one. We got here. It was called The Dark Trinity Part 1. Um, let's see. Oh, so... so <laughs> sorry, I literally just slapped the mic as I had to take my uh, hat off. Uh, so, I guess what the plot is... and I guess it's kind of similar to Nightwing. But Nightwing, because he's... Swear there's undercover with the Court of Owls. It looks like Red Hood's going to be undercover with Black Mask, which is great because obviously they have a history, but... I'm a huge fanboy of Black Mask. I love Black Mask. It's one of the thing of, I guess some people would say I'm wrong, but in your, I have like my top 10 villains. He doesn't quite squeeze maybe top 20, but he, for me, and maybe because he's gotten a little bigger over the years, but for me was a, in that top 10 of minor villains, you know, like uh, we talked about on the superhero roundup last month, like Shocker, top 10, you know, he's not trying to destroy the world. He has no big granules plants. He's just trying to, rob banks and you know take money same as black mask he wants to just take over gotham in like a crime sense you know not destroy it not kill a bunch of people he just wants to run the city always really loved him always loved the false face society roman cyanus is a great character and very very underrated in my opinion uh if you go back and you look at the story this guy kills his own parents you know it's he's a great character so when he popped up i was very very excited because I'm I'm a huge fan. I hated the Arkham Origins game because they did them really dirty. They, <laughs> if you know what I mean, they did that. So there's a big thing that they're playing up here that Black Mask, um, this organization, wants somebody to take it over eventually. And he has no he has no sons or no kids or anything like that. So he's kind of hinting at maybe jason todd taking over which one i will say i don't necessarily buy i'm kind of hoping black mask is just playing him i don't buy him handing it over yes red hood in the public looks like a villain but i don't know it just seems kind of strange to be like hey you, you think you want to take over my company you know uh yeah i i don't know if i buy that but i'm waiting to see how it plays out i like the proposition i like that kind of it gives a little depth to Black Mask. It's not just like, hey, I'm a bad guy and you're going to help me. It's kind of like, thing like, oh, I really want to plan for this to go down to somebody that I really trust. Whether he's lying or not, I think it adds a good wrinkle to him. Um, we get to go back to, we've seen, we got to see, and these are my spoilers. Um, if you want to read this and you want to know nothing, maybe skip ahead a couple minutes. I'm, I am talking about some plot points. Um, we get many flashbacks of Red Hood uh, when he was going to like a church school or something like that, or um, I think it was, I don't think it was before Batman. So it's like a school. It's a church. Obviously, there was a older lady that ran it, and what she would do is she'd use the people, the kids that went to the church, and I think the majority or all of them were all orphans or kids coming for foster care, and she was using them to help run her criminal organization, and that was really cool. A nice little twist, um, just like. I don't know. I liked it quite a bit. It's like, yeah, okay, it makes sense. She's a criminal. There's some sort of tension there with Black Mask because she got out of prison and then he, they kind of want to work together, but it sounds like Black Mask doesn't want to do things a certain way. You know, classic bad guy, bad guy kind of mix up and Red Hood has to go and talk to her and which not. And I, I just really liked that twist. Uh, Black Mask in general just had a good presence throughout the comic book you know he felt like he was felt through the whole, the whole thing at one point back to when he was talking about the father and son thing and passing it down he 
was really, really talk. He talked about Gotham like it was a lady, and he laid out all these kind of like parallels to it, like being like a relationship and whatnot. And I really like that. Um, and I like that he says that he likes that Red Hood has a code. So that's the thing of maybe it, he is fine with just not giving. Obviously, it's gonna be much. It's not gonna be that easy. But like, I like that Black Mask has a sense of, or he likes. <sighs> I guess I, I was going to say something, but I don't know if he does. Because I like the same point. I don't know if he is for this or against this. But let's say he is going to give Red Hood his business or whatever crime organization. I like that he likes that he has a code. I guess what I'm saying is with Black Mask, I just like that he many times has not been a cookie cutter villain. But many times has been a cookie cutter villain. And he easily could. And I think for any story, a villain being even a little fleshed out makes it home so so much better because you actually have some in-depth or some in-depth no idea where that came from i've literally this week been having like my i think i might have like a stroke because like the past two weeks i've been doing this thing where i've like if i would be like hey come back home i'd be like, come home back i've been doing that thing for like two weeks and like that's happening like two or three times a day so if i don't make it next geek first maybe you know why but anyways you care a lot more, or at least I did care a lot more about his motivations and whatnot with Black Mask, and he's not just like, yeah, even with the crime, just like, yeah, I'm gonna fuck people over and take their money and kill them and all this good stuff. Um, yeah, and I guess the strongest thing other than Black Mask, Jason Todd continues, it's kind of a lump, because in the Rebirth, they did such a good job with his scenes with Batman and Bruce, they're really good. And the thing is, I would have given this a 7.5 because it's pretty good. Nothing too huge happens. There is one good, there is one really good scene I won't spoil between Black Mask and Red Hood. Um, and maybe some punishment for some of Black Mask's false face society. I won't spoil what happens there. Very good scene. Um, I was going to give it a 7.5 because all that stuff is really, really good. But not too much happened. It's just kind of laying the groundwork. But uh, I'm bumping up to the 8 because the flashbacks were really good. Whether they were with... Uh, I think her name was Ma, the elderly that later that ran crime or flashbacks just to Jason's life or with Batman, that and Rebirth. Um, it's been really good and it's really fleshed out Todd because I feel like Todd has been fleshed out. Same thing as Black Mask in a way in the past, but there's other times where he's just like, yeah, he's just an anti-hero. You know, I like that we're getting to see, okay, but why is he anti-hero? And why exactly for people that haven't read from the beginning? Because when he became Red Hood, I didn't fucking read it when it happened. You know, I'm... 23 now and i didn't i don't have the luxury of having 40 years or when do they start in the 40s and 60s so yeah 40 50 years of reading like some people have you know so it's like and i've gone back and read them now but it's like it's still those flashbacks help add to that because you're not there in the moment when you're rereading or like reading it for the first time but now because you're reading this for the first time and the flashbacks you really get a feel because i feel like that's what new 52 is missing to be honest because i'm a big red hood fan like i already told you earlier but just the dynamic with bruce and i liked him as a character when i read him before i knew 52 i read the first two issues of red hood and that laws and just didn't grab me i felt like it was that kind of thing where he was just an anti-hero for the sake of being anti-hero and there wasn't enough to grasp on for me so i i i didn't stick with it i really want to but it's just and at that point i think i was just working like in, when new 2011 five years ago yeah so it was like that thing of like had to pick and choose you know but this one i've liked Re i like rebirth a little bit more than this to be honest but the number one i really liked as well so i'm giving it eight it was really good like it was really strong and i'm really excited i that's the thing too since i've started this one like i started um doing the uh top comic books it's funny I talked about earlier how I'm, I'm more of a Marvel guy, but to be honest, DC, I feel like since Rebirth, the majority ones I've read, I've liked all of them, and I felt I got my money's worth, and I've been, it's some that I put down, like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next, which is good at the same point when it's like, who knows, because they do two months, so it might be a little too much, but I've been really enjoying DC Re Rebirth quite a bit, and I'm I'm just excited to see where it goes in the next six months, especially with Marvel doing their reboot. If it's not that not the reboot, but their their new chapter, new saga, if it's not as good, they've definitely like there's more. I'm reading more DC than I am Marvel right now, which was not the case at the beginning of the year. So Red Hood is another one I'm adding to my list of ones I would recommend to almost anybody. I think there's gonna be there's something I think it. 
it is if you really enjoy anti-heroes definitely check it out if you like the bat family check it out so yeah i'd really recommend it it's going in my collection now of okay i'm gonna be picking this one up so speaking of the bat family this is one i've been waiting for for quite a while i've been waiting for it since scott snyder's uh new 52 run um yeah two, new 52 run ended I am a huge Scott Snyder fan. I even put in my top five comic book writers when I did it with Liam, so a little spoiler, but go back and listen to that good cast. Um, I put him there, and it's, yes, maybe it's a little early on. I've not read everything he's done. It's just all his Batman stuff. But for me, I've said many reasons, too, I put him top five. It's definitely because I was reading stuff as a run was going for the first time in my life. Like, I've always been a month behind this and that, but that was one where I was reading it. Month to month, month to month, I really enjoyed it. And start to finish, like I said, um, on previous casts, like when he did Zero Year, I thought I was, it was just so lame. And I'm just like, oh, like origin. And even though like, yeah, we're going to change up and do something different. It's like, like, just leave it alone. Like you have so much better stories to tell. And for me, like truth of the Zero Year stuff is the weakest, but I enjoyed the hell of it. And the only reason I think it's the weakest is just because I'm just not a big prequel guy, whether you listen to uh duo or geek verse like with row one i'm very excited i'm so excited i think that movie's gonna knock my socks off like it's gonna be great but it's still a prequel and for me it's like i can only get so excited because when i know the outcome uh i I'm, i don't get as excited unless it's a, an adaption you know like if they did like a full-on oh we <laughs> We got a full-on killing joke adaption. But, like, that, that I got excited because I'm like, oh, I know how great this is and I want to see that on screen. Where with Rogue One, you don't know it's going to be great. So it's still that thing of, like, okay, I don't know it's going to be great as a prequel. So that's how I felt Zero Year. But then once I read it, great. Fantastic. Um, fantastic way they set up Joker and the Red Hood gang and regular, red, reg, the regular. <laughs> I don't even know what the regular would do. Let me know what you think the regular's powers or abilities would be. Um, so yeah, everything was great. Um, Court of Owls, obviously, Death of the Family, Endgame is phenomenal. One of my best favorite Batman Joker stories. Super heavy, like it's, it's sorry if it's spoilers, but once again, if you're listening to this show, you should should know. Like he made Gordon Batman, and that was another thing where I'm like, oh, like this is not gonna be good. Like this is lame. Like why are you doing this? And I really enjoyed it. Um, and I liked to I liked the end of the series too. So I was looking very very forward to All Star Batman. And this is not a you should not have to bring someone down to raise someone up. So I'm not gonna talk about that comic fully. But I am not really enjoying the the Batman Rebirth, and it's pretty disappointing to be honest. As you know, there. Uh, like this is not to be sexist or anything like that but wonder woman just i've never been the huge fan always liked her but never been my top 10 so for me it's not a sexist thing it's not anything like that it's just a pure character thing of like for me i should 100 percent like batman more because i he's my favorite character i love him and even then let's go with uh, i'm trying to think of like a new one i've read hmm because right now I'm kind of just reading all my favorites. There's not too many. Like, even Marvel. I'm reading Daredevil, reading Iron Fist. So characters I really like. I'm trying to think of one. Well, even... Okay, well, let's say Red Hood. Red Hood didn't like the New 52 that much. So, really, I should be enjoying Batman War. Because, once again, it's my favorite character. Really enjoying Batman. Would love... Like, doesn't matter the character. Sex, race, gender, sexual orientation. Doesn't matter. Like, I should be enjoying Batman a lot more. And... Bat the Batman one that is uh, the Rebirth one I've enjoyed the least and that's one to be honest the first the Rebirth was really good and the first issue was really good and then after that it just got it just feels I'm not trying to be mean it just feels very generic very ho hum when I talk about comics like um, Wonder Woman now especially when she got introduced um, um, Flash Green Lantern Daredevil uh, Civil War two all new Wolverine. Um, I'm enjoying all those a lot more, and those are ones where I'm like, I can't either. I can't wait, or I'm excited for. Maybe it's not like, oh, I need it, but I'm excited for when it comes. I'm like, oh, awesome! Like, it's here. I'm ready to read it. Batman, not all. It's kind of felt not like a chore, but it's kind of getting there. It's a chore if you're not fully in re like enjoying reading it. And I read issue five, and I haven't, and that's why I haven't put it on here. I'm, you know, if you're a longtime listener, you know Batman's my favorite fictional character. Maybe you're wondering why I didn't put him on there, 
on any of these and it just hasn't been that great so i was even more so really waiting for scott snare to come back like if there's a good batman could have quenched my thirst but him not being on that series is is a big it's 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 a big hole so with this with all-star batman it is spoiler phenomenal i don't know how I don't know how much spoilers I'm going to get into. I'll try to steer clear because I think you need to read this. It's great. Scott Snyder's killing it. Um, ah, shit. I can't remember who the artist's name. He's taking one for Greg Capullo. Um, still great. The style, obviously not the same as Greg Capullo's, but it seems to mesh with Snyder's work. Um, obviously, I'd still love Capullo back, but it was not It was not a dip in quality. It was like, okay, different, different type of look. But it had me hooked from the start. Um... I love Scott Snyder, and the art in some of them in the opening panels was really, really great. And that's what I mean. Not that I still prefer Capullo's, but not in the way of this was bad. It was a different, and there were some panels that really, really had me hooked, especially the beginning. There was some really good art. Um, it just it just is fun, and like the basic premise is that Batman has Harvey Dent kidnapped and he has to take him to a certain location because he's trying to, uh, I think they're trying to fix Harvey's face again or something like that. Like he's trying to fix Harvey, but of course, Two-Face has hired a bunch of people to take Batman out and we're getting like, and I've heard rumors and even Snyder has confirmed this about different villains and whatnot appearing and then we got to see people like Killer Moth and Firefly and Black Spider. Like, I love that i love when you pull the minor villains or you like i'm a big minor villains guy so i like when you do that and supposedly he's doing that more so lots of cool cameo in this lots and this one actually i'll say that same for the end because i don't want to spoil the score you see um but yeah the setup is great the dead hiring or harvey hiring all the people to take out batman it's great you get to play with the duality again um this is one that it's only one issue in so you might think like oh you're 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 blowing it a little too much per se but it's one that i think by the time the arc is done i could see it as an animated film or like an animated like batman the animated series episode like that's what this issue felt like and it was really really strong really good um let's see yeah there's a few more notes but i the cursed whale's great explain why everyone has their own colors it was great but there's some stuff I don't want to, I want to talk about more, but I don't, because this one, I, I don't want to spoil. I want people to go read it, so I'm just going to do the overall. I'm giving it the first ever 10 out of 10. Yeah, I am, because I think I said previously what I want is good writing, good art, good story, good action, and then maybe something that leaves you hanging at the end, and that's what this had. It had a great story, had a great setup, it had action, it had a twist, and a character that or characters, I guess, that worked in the way that... They worked in every way you'd want, to be honest. Like, they all felt like the characters you knew previously, you know, new venture. It was fantastic. There was lots of stuff in here. So, yeah, I would give it a 10 out of 10, to be honest. And, yeah, there is a twist. Not he's not going to talk about it all, but it was a big setup of, like, man, I cannot wait. And that's coming out, I think it's in two weeks at the time of this recording. So, I'm looking very forward. So, please pick up All-Star Batman by Scott Snyder. It's great. If you like that old stuff that he did, you'll like this. And if you haven't read that, you should definitely go read that. So, now, let's see here. <sighs> Sorry, I had to wet the whistle. We're going to move on to Marvel now. Talk about that. So let's see. Which one? Okay, I'll go. I'm going to do Wolverine 11. Um, because the other one I'm covering a spoiler, Moon Knight number five, end of the mini series, and I'm gonna go a little spoilers about that one. I'll give a review and then I'll tell you when spoilers. But I like to leave the ones I want to talk about spoilers to the end. Um, Wolverine, all new Wolverine, has been a standout since it started. I it is in my top five. Every issue, every issue is strong or fun. It's what I just described about how All Star Batman for me was a ten out of ten because. The comic had like action story great character work and a twist and like or something to leave you hanging or wanting more uh this comic is constantly doing that i don't know if there's one that's done it in particular I, i'd have to i don't know because this is 11 i can't i don't know if any of the 10 were 10 out of 10 comics because i don't rate comic i don't rate 
I don't actually rate stuff unless I'm doing a review for this. So whether it's movies or games, I don't just sit around being like, oh, yeah, I think this is like, I don't just, you know, review it to myself for shits and giggles. But I like to throw a rating out there so people know kind of a general base of what I'm thinking. But overall, this series, like, I think if I had to give an average, it'd be like an 8.59, maybe even a 9.5. It's been so fun. And like I said, I described that one issue of Ulster Batman. That's what this entire series has been as fun action character work story lots and lots of heart like it the setup was great of x23 being like finding out about her three clones and trying to protect them and the adventures they went on and now she's kept gabby the only one surviving clone and she's her little roommate kind of little sister and the the last issue ended with a little spoiler of old man logan who is not wolverine from this universe old man logan's from a parallel universe he ended up in there you their universe and it's a big deal yada 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 but ended up there and it's a it it's i don't know if there's any comic right now that's doing better where they can go from fun to lighthearted to action dramatic so quickly and flawlessly because sometimes it takes a sharp turn and you're like whoa that that like that hurt the spine a little you know like it, it didn't feel natural this feels natural so much because evidence of this was in issue 10 to 11 issue 10 was kind of fun and comedic and a good time and that takes this turn of like whoa and then 11 it's full on kind of balls to the walls very intense very dramatic but it all fits in this world and laura is a killer character i really really want her in the movies because i think I've said this before, I don't think it's a smart idea just to go replace Hugh Jackman right now. I don't know if anyone can do it, so why not go the other route, introduce X-23 the clone. I think it would be phenomenal, and she's a great character. She's she's not in my top ten as of right now, but she's getting really, really close. And I think at one point Dynamic Duo will probably be a top ten characters, like comic book characters, so I wonder if she'll get in there. Because I I'm now at the point where... I'm going to read her no matter what. Even if like a year from now, let's say she gets a new comic, I'll read, oh, not that good. I might stop like the Red Hood thing. I'm always going to read it or want to check it out. That's the thing of like that that character has that check mark of like, okay, I got to see what they're doing and give it a chance. And this is paid off phenomenal. Like I said, as far as I think it's, I honestly think it's my favorite comic going right now. It's all, it's for sure in top five, for sure in the top three, but it's, it's one to two to three. It might be number one. I'm trying to think. Daredevils. I really enjoyed Daredevil. I really enjoyed the Moon Knight series, but it's a mini series, so that's different. Um, with All Star Batman, that might kind of take over, but it, it's in a strong showing. And yeah, so that is just the overall series, and I highly recommend to go read back. Start reading this. It's a great character. If you're mad that oh it's not Wolverine, you know, if you don't like replacements, throw it out the window and give this a shot. It's fantastic. Uh, to get to some actual story. I'm not going to spoil too much because it's because I want to you read it. But this one has a lot of stuff that it's not. I, most of the plot points, I feel, are kind of spoilers. Um, it is suffering the effects of Civil War 2. Um, so it is a little bit of a tie in cap makes an appearance, which is good at Steve Rogers cap. So a couple of times they kind of hint at him being more aggressive and violent or just kind of more of his evil side, which if you're reading Captain America, you know, you know, what's up with that guy. He's, he's, he's in a rough go around right now, but, um, yeah, so cap, he, he's in there, (laughs) he's in there. There's some, there's a really good conflict. I don't want to tell you what the conflict is, but It comes back to that Inhuman, and that Inhuman has seen something that, um, and I went over this last time, it's Ulysses, or Ulysses, I don't know how to say his name, so the Inhuman that can maybe see the future, but maybe it's not, like, I'm not gonna spoil that, if you know, if you're reading, you know what's up, but he can possibly predict the future, and he's predicted that Old Man Logan is going to do something very bad, Cap and Shield are there to take him in, and the Wolverine crew, everybody is not really for it, and it's very intense opening there's a really good conflict because laura doesn't really know which way to trust if she's going to trust shield and hill because her and hill have a really good rapport or if she's going to trust wolverine it's old man logan who she doesn't personally know but she has a connection obviously to logan or james or jimmy whoever you want to weapon to <laughs> weapon x like he she had a if you've been reading or watching any comics or cartoons of x-men in the past 10 years you know that they had a strong relationship so she obviously has some caring for him so there's a really good conflict of seeing what is she gonna do uh there's a big big 
chase scene through a house that's lots of fun. It's only, I legitimately think it's only two pages, but it's, it's just lots of fun. It's very kind of, and that's the thing. It's, it's a very intense comic book, but they throw something in there to kind of, to make you laugh and have some levity about it. And I really like that. Um, so these are mini sp- well, I, before I get to, it's a super minor spoiler, but the ending is a is huge. It's kind of a it's kind of a heartbreaker to be honest. Like it's a, it, it, and the shame is I, I read the synopsis for the next comic and I feel like the ending is kind of a misdirect. So if you think I'm spoiling it, I'm not. But at the time when I read it, big heartbreaker and like very sad. Great twist. Um, yeah, I'm very looking forward to what's next. I love this comic. And then the minor spoiler was they have a Wolverine named Jonathan. Like a literal literal, literal Wolverine um, that is Gabby's present. And at one point he gets shot. Like I said, spoilers. He doesn't die, but he gets shot and they kind of make it look like he's going to die. And it's super sad. Like, And that's how good this comic book is, in my opinion. Like, They made me care about this Wolverine. Not just because he's cute. Like, They did a good job and they did a good job emphasizing the relationship that you know x23 has with gabby and that gabby has with the wolverine so really good i re- highly recommend it please go check that out um i give that one 8.5 or a 9 that's the range i'm going i can't throw a solid one i'm actually gonna reread it i think later today because i'm rereading a bunch of stuff um i should be trying to catch up but that one was that, that one was really good but i, I yeah, maybe I, I'm going to reread it, but maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should catch up on the ones I don't, I haven't had done because I've also fall back. I've been fall, I've been reading a lot of old stuff, which is not bad, but I've, you know, I, I kind of like to stay up on the ones that I've bought and stay current. But right now I'm rereading, uh, what is it? Uh, oh, Going Sane, Legends of the Dark Knight. I was talking with someone about that on Twitter, about that story. And I was just like, man, I'd really like to. I'd really like to read that again. So I'm rereading that, and then I'm going to be reading some older Carnage stuff that a friend recommended to me because uh, I want to read Carnage. And not many people I know personally have read Carnage, so I wanted a recommendation. He recommends some, so great. And same thing for you. If you have any, throw it out. Because like he, even though I'm not reading too much of Carnage, he's in my top ten just for crossover and Spider-Man appeal. But And I know his backstory. Like That stuff I've read, or at least I've heard of, or had friends told me, or the classic like read some on Wikipedia as like a... 12 year old boy but i want to get more into it so i've been reading a bit older stuff which is not a bad thing but i there's current comics i do want to catch up on so finally oh so yeah wolverine 11 8.59 somewhere there very strong comic very good very 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 good conflict looking forward to uh what's next in the series finally moon knight issue 5 end of this mini series this has been so fucking good and so phenomenal uh, Moon Knight is, I don't know if he's in my top 10, but he's in my top 20 probably. He is just based on probably when I was a kid, look, when you saw him, I think that's majority how many of them gone top 10. And then when they stayed there, it's with the, the, with the, uh, the writing and the story went up. But I say like my kid top 10 or like my preteen top 10 was the characters, but it was just like, that's the first thing that grabs you as a kid is their look. And even like going back all the way to when you buy comics for the first time, you don't know who the writers are. You don't know who the artist is. You don't know who the story is. But you buy it because, man, that cover, it sure looks cool, right? So, and the covers here have been phenomenal. Um, I guess it's kind of a series review. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it yet. I'll get into some spoilers at the end. I'll let you know because I want you to read this. But just a series review of the 1 to 5. Fantastic. That was one I could not wait every month read that's one i've said before sometimes there's one i leave to the end of the month before this cast i'd read a bunch and i'd be like okay i'm gonna pick these ones that was one when i got it right away i read right away it's like that ulcer batman civil war and see even like like wolverine i haven't been because they're like lately the few issues there wasn't too many cliffhangers so it's like oh i can wait but these ones were so outstanding and the biggest thing i gotta do a shout out to is the art the art is phenomenal in this i'm actually gonna go look up right now because if i don't shout this out i'd feel terrible but the art has been fantastic it's been so here we go penciler cover artist greg smallwood penciler is greg smallwood and then francisco francaville francavilla i think that's how you say it but look those two up the art has been like i said led it led LSD, really trippy, really beautiful, and just like a total 
mind fuck of not only the writing but just the art in general it's it's probably my favorite comic book look wise it's it's such a unique look and it's this way of like it feels beautiful and clean but dirty and twisted and broken at the same time it's unbelievable it's phenomenal i couldn't recommend just just looking at it even if you didn't and that's one thing i'll give a shout to is that's some of the best comics is yes obviously you want to know what the character is saying but this is one where i feel like you could just see the panels and know what's going on and that is i think a fantastic work to do that like i think that's a really strong quality to have that and like obviously the the writer is involved as well but that that takes skill and because there's many comic books that you could read and you'd have no clue what's going on if those speech balloons aren't around but in this one you kind of would have an idea and even then it would just seem like great art so there's that the writing is phenomenal it's this great like mr robot uh fight club sort of feel like i can see why people are throwing sammy malik for uh, a moon knight series which i hope not because people are like he'd be perfect but it's like why do we need to have him play the same fucking role? Like it's it's pretty similar. So like that that's just a personal thing. But it's it's this really trippy mind fuck of a series that's super entertaining. That is really dark, but not in a dark like a you know a saw movie sort of way. Just it you just get this feeling of unease when you read it. Constant twists and turns, and not twists and turns for the sake of maybe they did it for the sake, but it feels natural and it feels good in every and maybe it is because it's a mini series. It, it feels a lot more tighter but do this more often with other characters too like if there's characters that you want to f- put out there and you're not sure if people are going to like instead of just being like well let's just shelf them do a mini series I mean, even do three like this is phenomenal i'm really really hoping like people that read this tweet about it like get out there i don't think i've actually tweeted about this the finale but i'm gonna after i get off this cast like get the word out there about this comic book so people buy it and so we'll get more because the way it ends is like oh you know could continue whatnot like who knows i'm really hoping it does because i'm gonna be super disappointed if i don't see this team and it, it has to be this team i obviously i want to see the moon knight character regardless because i'm a big moon knight fan of mark specter but i I think it has to be this team, at least for the first. Like, I'd love a, I'd love a Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo run of this team. Uh, who's the writer? I, I'm actually gonna look and see what else this guy has done because, like, as far as writing wise, it's too. Jeff Lemire. Um, yeah, go read this. The entire series. There's only five. It's so good. So the main point of the series is Mark Spector is in a crazy loony bin crazy house, whatever, and it's a classic. He believes he's Moon Knight, and he's trying to trying to get out trying to get out and there's many obstacles in his way and some people see other things maybe they'll just see normal you know guards trying to keep him out but he'll see these egyptian sort of evil you know like those cat statues and everything like that like all this trippy shit and whatnot and then some people see what he does some people does and it's this whole thing i'm not going to go into fully detail because i want you to read it but it is phenomenal it's a mind trip um yeah it's a it's a really, it's a good cat and mouse game. It's a good cat and mouse game. It's a good myth thriller. It's a good mystery. Like it's a lot of good genres. There's not much comedy, but you don't really need it in this one. It's so strong. It's almost in a way like it has nothing to do with serial killers or anything. But I also got like a seven vibe sort of from it. Like it, I got a lot of vibes, and they're all good vibes. So, um, highly recommend the series. I'm gonna go into a. F- I'm going to go with some big spoilers for the end of five. So if you've read them, stick along. If you're not planning to read them, if you just want to listen, stick along. So I'm going to go into those. If you're bowing out, thank you for tuning in. Let me go into them. Uh, so he's been trying to get away this whole time. And then Mark, it ended four with him coming face to face with Moon Knight, which was super cool because, well, what was super cool is what Mark was wearing. He's just wearing this cool badass white suit, all white, white mask with the moon crescent on his head really cool he looked good just had to shut that out there but the big twist was like and then the other guy's like i'm moon knight so it was revealed that the actual moon knight was con conshu i think i said that right but he's somebody that's kind of been guiding him and talking to him the whole time so he feels betrayed and once again he was kind of trusting he didn't know if what he was seeing was real and he was kind of trusting these gods to help him out with these egyptian magical beings 
and then it seems like they've kind of been playing along with him too. So it's the thing of like, is he crazy? Is he sane? He doesn't even know. And even if he is sane, are these people that are these Egyptian gods helping him out or why they're playing with him, everything like this. And then that, the bean Conchu says that he doesn't really believe Mark Spector can carry on Moon Knight just because he's weak as far as just body and mind. So he wants to take over his body and it ends with him jumping off a pyramid and then he kills himself and i legitimately thought he was dead which he could be but like they left it in a way that they didn't but i legitimately thought he was dead because it was a mini series i'm like oh man they're gonna they're gonna kill him off they're like oh let's just have some really one good run and maybe it could bring him back a couple years but kills himself but then wakes up in the uh, bed with uh what the fuck is her name is it marnie or marine whatever that girl's name is i think it's i think it's Mar. Hmm. Let's go with Marnie. <laughs> I could be wrong. Let's go with Marnie. I can't remember because I read this one a few weeks ago. I'm just going off my notes because I read that right away when I got it. Um, wakes up with Marnie and they're just, uh, or Marlene. I do have my notes. Good job, Pastor Travis. And he wakes up as Steve, one of his other, like, um, aliases. If you don't know about Moon Knight's aliases, I'm not going to explain it. Go to a Wikipedia page, do some reading. He has a lot of aliases. One, he's a taxi driver. One, he's an actor. And this is the one where he's waking up as and she's just talking about like oh they need to hurry up and they need to you know get going because they're they're gonna go to they're shooting a movie and it's like on a pyramid set an egyptian everything like that and he like he wakes up and he goes to the curtains and he opens them up and they look like buildings but to be honest the buildings looked all sort of egyptian or egyptian vibe so once again ended on a cliffhanger sort of mind fuck and then one of the first pages like it's like the creators saying stuff and when fans write in was like saying like oh like oh no it was on the last panel it said the end and it was a question mark i got i'm getting goosebumps right now and it was that thing like oh like i want more and it's like the reason i read comics and stuff like that um the whole issue to be honest was it didn't feel rushed but it didn't feel fully completed i wanted maybe a little more i felt like the ending came a little too soon and maybe that is by design because they want to leave you guessing and whatnot but i feel like i just want a little bit more i'm giving it a solid nine really really good comic like just the issue the series i don't know like 9.5 to 10 to be honest it's one of the best mini series i've ever read um but this issue in particular I felt like I got enough out of it, and I really enjoyed it, really liked it, but I felt like I still needed just a little bit more, just a little bit more explanation, because the Khonshu is Moon Knight, it seems like he's been playing some games, but instead of getting a result, like a resolution, Mark just kind of take, chooses to take his own life, so it's like, what was the Khonshu's, you know, motives, if, if it was in Mark's head, like, why, like, there was just a few questions I won, and maybe that's because they're opening up for, like, trying to leave it open for a series, if they do a series, I will be buying this all the time, please do a series, but, um, uh, I've just wanted a little bit more, out of a finale, the whole series, to me, is still great, I'm gonna read this multiple times, now I'm gonna read it, I can't wait, I might talk about it again, to be honest, especially if they announce something, um, I might talk about it again when they put, or I'm going to, I might talk about again if they announce a series, I'm going to read one to five. There you go, Travis. Um, sorry, I can hear my dog barking in the background, so no idea what's going on. <laughs> so I just like had a moral lapse of repeating, but I would highly recommend reading the series. I wouldn't read this alone. Don't read any of them alone. You start one to five, and I love them all. Like I said, it's like a nine, nine point five, ten for the series. It might be higher when I reread it. It's it was phenomenal. It's great. I know I use the words phenomenal a lot, but this month I had a lot of good, and there's a lot of comics that I didn't put on here that I wanted to, but that's why I select five because I could I could talk all day about comic books. I really could. So. Yeah, that's going to do it for today. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I like doing these nice solo events. And I I love my Geekverse People Dynamic Duo, but I like being able to do this and talk to just you guys and talk comics because um, Liam gone now. There won't be too much. There are going to be some talking comics. I know Kyle and Dylan are starting to read some, but they got a lot of catching up to. Like I said, I, I've been reading them since I was... I don't know six seven, and it's like I still have lots of catching up. So there is a huge world of comics. Um, and yeah, I hope you're reading some comics out there, giving one a shot. Even if it's just one comic a month, if you find one that you like, give it a shot, read it, continue with it, stay with it, 
it's lots of fun. But no, I like doing these solo casts. That's why, I, I, like, I, you know, I I want to try and do September. We'll see if I get enough time. I want to because I really like doing these ones. I like talking to the fellow comic fans out there. I like doing this. I love talking comics. But if not, I will get back to it at some point. Like I said, I think October I'll for sure be back because Batman Beyond, big huge batman beyond fan i love the series i love terry mcginnis so i think i'll be back for that um but yeah thank you very much for tuning in i i I did the first podcast i wasn't sure if people were gonna be digging it they liked it i did a second one it was bigger than the first one so i was so i appreciate you listening and all the support you give me and the rest of the podcast people we've had a big big month and like i know it says comic books but at the end i usually get to talk a little bit and it i it's like this like the mini 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 rant rave repeat which plug go check that out where i like to you know because i'm just talking to the fans that are listeners i like to say little stuff but yeah thank you all for the past i don't know past couple months since e3 in Hong Kong, we've had a big boom um we had our biggest month we haven't even announced this on geek first yet but we had our biggest month in august and we literally have broken our biggest month since let's see june i think it, yeah it was april and then at, like i can't remember what was it before then but since june we continually broke month i uh, broke our record like we had june biggest month ever we had july biggest month ever and then we had august biggest month ever so september will definitely not be that because we have <laughs> no e3 or comic-con or like suicide squad nothing to rest our laurels on i'm being like this is gonna be big but it's not about like that for us like we legitimately started this podcast just to have fun and we like that you guys like listen to us have fun and we have fun talking listeners that's the other thing with this one or other ones like send some comments our way send some questions same thing with this like i've said if you want me to read something let me know and i may even read it and review it on here but yeah Thank you for just supporting us the past little while. If you could continue to support us, that'd be great on Facebook and Sound or no 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 SoundCloud's coming later. Get get hey SoundCloud, get back there. You're trying to budge, bastard. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, most importantly, geekfirstpodcast.com. That's where you can find everything, whether it's listening, links, all the shebang. I said shebang early. I'm going to have to find a different catchphrase at the end. But you can find everything there. But yeah, like us on Facebook. Throw us a follow on Twitter. We're dropping you know news. We drop scheduling stuff for our show. Um, we drop uh, updates of what's going on. Sometimes we post some questions. Stuff like that. So yeah, like those pages. Um, follow the pages. And now SoundCloud, you can come over. You can follow us on SoundCloud or iTunes and YouTube. Please go subscribe and rate. The rate would really help us out. And review us. Let us know. I'm not like I. Of course, we'd love a five star review, but let me know. Like I, we're always looking to improve the show. There's times where you know fans have said stuff, and I, we've taken into consideration. There's stuff that I've changed because without you guys we wouldn't be probably doing you know a show as much anymore you know like we, we started but now it's like now we have actual fan base where we're 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 more conscious of it we're at the beginning i think you can tell if you listen from the beginning you can tell that we like i said now we plan the shows we do this we do that like we do a lot so and we do it just because we have a fun time but we also have lots of great listeners like lots of this past few years other than a few people other than one person majority of all the negative people are always people with like a a non-picture of themselves so those ones i never take <laughs> those ones like i always kind of just write them off like i don't know what this person is but um and that's not to say you can't have a profile picture with not you in it but it just seems like the old, i've like I said, other than one time, I never got any. We've never got anything negative from somebody that's not doesn't have like a Call of Duty picture or the egg. The egg is the classic because you're like, oh, I'm not gonna trust this guy. But yeah, so but thank you very much for tuning in to the Dynamic Duo Top Comics of August. I'm Travis Snail, and I promise the next time you hear from me, it will not be boring. <laughs>